I am dumb. Hey everyone, how you doing? Gareth Rockstar Productions here. So I have talked in the past about how I have subscribed to a service called Video Games Monthly. You can see the signage behind me here. It is a video game service that drop ships right to your door. Three, four, five, or ten retro video games right to your doorstep. And it's not a rental service. You get to keep these things. These are your games to keep. And they have games for systems all the way back from like the Atari 2600, the ColecoVision, the Intellivision, upwards to things for like the PS4 and the Xbox One. Now, I talked in our video last month, which you can check out right up there, um, how I was going to go ahead and take a break for a few months. We're getting ready for convention season. Don't really have a whole lot of time with spring and summer coming up, and I was going to take a break. Guess what someone forgot to cancel? Yeah. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to take a look at what we got in this month's box, take a look at the value, and if there are any cartridge-based games in here, we're going to take a look at the condition of the pins on the games. Now, for just your knowledge, what basically I am collecting for right now and what I told them to send me, PlayStation 1 because I was looking for the Spyro games, although I'll probably take that off because I got those at the Midwest Gaming Classic. You can check that video out right there. Um... So I do have the Famicom on there. I believe I have the Super Famicom and Super NES uh, and the Wii U, I think, are the games that are the systems I have games on here for. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look and see what we got and see if we got good value for what we had. So the way that we normally do this is we do a blind draw and I've got the light box and everything set up. We're not going to do the light box yet. If there are any cartridges, we'll do the light box for that. So let's take a look and see what we have. Now, I have not looked inside the box as of yet. In fact, I'm going to position it this way so you all get to see the box first. And I feel some bubble wrap in here. What the heck is this? <laughs> it's a Yoshi Clapper. Sounds like my prom night. Okay. Let's see. Do we have cards? Feels like a couple cards we have. So there is a video games monthly card. And what this basically tells you to do is it reminds you to update your library each and every month. That way, if you do get other games, like say you go flea marketing or you go to conventions or you just buy games at retro video game stores, it's a reminder for you to go ahead and update your library. That way you don't get duplicates. I've had that happen when I am dumb. Don't forget to cancel my service, but also when I forget to update my library. Also, they have on here, if you do go ahead and get a box from them and you post it to any of their social media pages and tag them in it, it enters you to win a free three-up box from them. And I've mentioned this in the past. So this is a two-up. This means I normally pay for the, uh, what is it here, $34.99 a month to get three games. This tells me that I've got five games in here. This also tells me the games that I have in here probably very low value so let's take a look at what we have we've got ooh, we do have some cartridge based games in here and feels like some disc based games so we'll go with the disc first let's see the first one here spongebob square pants super sponge i know nothing about this let's uh take a look here too it is so it's got the slip sheet on here it does have the disc so it is complete Disc is in okay shape, but could probably use some some polishing on it. I'll end up taking this to Live Action Games, local store here in Champaign, Illinois, to go ahead and get that cleaned. Okay, not excited about that one. Game number two, Tomb Raider, The Last Revelation. I will admit, I've never been a big fan of the Tomb Raider games. Now, this also looks to be complete. It does have the, the manual in there. And, ooh, this disc is... This disc is rough. I mean, it's not scratched, but it's really dirty. It's one of those that it could definitely use a, uh, a cleaning on here. And this, if you take a look on the back right there, it actually says, uh, let's see, Travis and Donna Brogdon with a phone number on it, Blockbuster Video. So this was a former Blockbuster game. Let's see what else we have. Ooh, there's either a Genesis or a Master System game in here. A couple... These loose master system? What is this? All right, it's a Famicom game with a sticker on it. Kaiju Monogatari? Not sure, that's the label on it. And again, we'll flash the value here up on screen. 
Uh, this is one of those where to open up a Famicom cartridge. Do I have it here? I don't have it handy. You actually need like a clamp to squeeze the cartridge because it's a pressure fit on here. I don't know that I'm going to open this up, but we are definitely going to clean that one out. Interesting that I had a label on there. This also feels like, yep, that's a Famicom. Okay. We did not get this here in the States. This is the Goonies. Uh, we got Goonies 2. They had Goonies 2 in Japan, but this is the original Goonies game. Um, I've never played it. Now, one thing of note here, too, if you take a look down here, there's a little number. This one says RC809. If you are shopping for import games, what you can do is type that number into Google. There are databases out there that will tell you what the game is, and I bet you that's why they put the... Um, little note on here too is the fact that I am not seeing any number on here 1988 birthday name code limited but that's all that that's showing on here so um, alright not a total loss something at least I'd like to check out let's see there's something else or is that that's the tab to the, oh this has got a tab on the case so let's take a look here so this is Master System. This is Marksman Shooting and Trap Shooting, which means I would need the Light Phaser, which means this game is completely useless to me. Uh, nice case, though. I may transplant some of my other games into that case. Oh! So, game, and it does have the poster. And I'm going to just set that there for a second. As I want to just verify. Yeah, there's nothing else. Nothing else in the box, so let's take a look here. It does have the poster, which... I may pull out of this to complete another game that doesn't have the poster. So there's that guy there on the front. And that on the back. Very similar to like what Nintendo did with the now you're playing with power. Uh, and then for the Super Nintendo Super Power ones. Um, it does have the manual. And the manual looks to be in pretty crispy shape. I'm liking that. You know, not real many folds or anything. A setup and instructions. Marksman shooting. Um... Yeah, taking control right here, it's easy. Just pull the light phaser, or plug the light phaser. Don't have my glasses on. Plug the light phaser into port one. So I don't have a light phaser. I don't have a CRT. I don't want a CRT. Never want to own another CRT. So this, to me, absolutely worthless. But we'll pop the values up on screen right now. Um, now let's take a look real quick. We're just going to throw the couple Famicom games in the light box and see the condition of the pins. Let's go. All right, so taking a look here, this is, again, Kaiju Monogatari. Uh, yeah, let's go with that here. Yeah, I just want to take a second, too. I love the looks of the Famicom cartridges, and I've said that many times before. You know, even just the artwork that's on here looks sharp, looks pretty. I absolutely love it now. Looking in here, I can't really get a good look at the pins. So what we're going to do is what we do with all of our games that we get that's cartridge-based from anyone, not just video games monthly, from anywhere where we get a cartridge game. And that is I have one up cleaning card fluid here, basically just isopropyl alcohol, and then I actually have two different cleaning cards. I've got a larger one here, works uh, great on NES and Genesis and Super NES cartridges, but I found for Famicom cartridges, the one up card mini tends to work well. This is basically designed for uh, like Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, also works great on Famicom games. So. I'm going to do here is put a little bit of this on the fluid side and we are going to scrub that here now I know a lot of people ask can't you just use uh, ooh that's really gross we're probably going to use our other cleaner here in a second um, can't you just use a q-tip on this or some kind of cotton swab short answer absolutely can the thing about a cotton swab or a q-tip is the fact that it leaves lint and fuzz behind this tends not to do that. Uh, so what we're gonna do here, because yeah, I'm pulling off a lot of a lot of crud here, is I'm gonna break up my other cleaner here, and this is called Bright Boy, and this is a metal polish. And I know in the past some people have used uh, Brasso or other uh, brass or metal cleaners. The thing with those is those are abrasives. Bright Boy is not. This is not an abrasive. Says so right on the bottle itself. Um, it does remove just the ever so slightest bit of material from the pins, but here's the thing. I've never had a game not work because I used Bright Boy on it. 
we found this back in the day for cleaning RC motors. And uh, like we've put this through dyno tests just to check to make sure what it does for resistance and peed and so on and so on and so forth. We found we got better electro connectivity after using Bright Boy than just natural right out of the box for motors. So the way that we apply this is, and hopefully I don't spill any here in our photo booth, just put a little bit here on a cotton swab. And generally what it does is it attacks like carbon buildup and things along those lines. So what we're gonna do is this isn't cleaning, we're just applying. Now it may pull off some dirt here as we're going through and do this. Let's take a look. Yeah, you can see that blue on there. That's like oxidation and other gunk that is pulling off of that. So again, not cleaning, just applying. Wow, look how filthy that is. So we're gonna set that one aside for now. So let's grab the Goonies while we actually let the Bright Boy kind of sink in on that one. Um, I've still got fluid on here and these pins look better. So we'll see here. Yeah, it looks like I'm still pulling off a, a good amount of gunk on here. Even looking like, and I don't know if you can see it here and I'm gonna grab something I can point with. Change the brightness on the camera a little bit. There's a bunch of dirt and crap right here too, like externally on the cartridge. Same here on that side. So um, not uh, not really thrilled with the way that that cartridge looks externally either. We're actually going to grab some paper towels. With isopropyl alcohol, you can use it on the outside of plastics like this. I wouldn't just try to make sure you keep it away from the label because it will attack the adhesive that keeps the label on the cartridge. And literally all we're going to do is just kind of wipe that off there yeah I mean, it's not much but you can see it is getting some of the dirt off of there i just want to keep that as far away from inside the system as possible and we're going to do the same thing on this one where we're going to just take a a cotton swab i'm going to apply a little bit of bright boy to it and all we're going to do is we are going to apply it to the pins i always do the top side up top side first you can kind of see that. Ugh. Bottom side. And all we're doing, we're just applying. We're going to let that sit and soak for a little bit and let that clean. And you know, I had completely forgotten about the Master System game. This is the Marksman Shooting Trap Shooting. And uh, we're just going to open this up real quick while we're letting the, uh, the Bright Boy dry on the other two games. Nice thing about this is the fact that Master System and a lot of Genesis games, Mega Drive games, are just Phillips head screws. Let's take a look at how this one looks. Um, not great, but not terrible. Taking a look at those pens there, definitely signs of wear and tear, but not the worst I've seen. This is one of those, again, uh, I'm not going to bright boy this one. This one I will go ahead and just clean because in the end, my goal with this one, I'm just going to flip it. I'm, I am not going to hold on to this one. Now, if you've watched me do any of these video games monthly uh, unboxings and whatnot where I've opened up a cartridge, one tip here you're going to hear me say yet again, when you are screwing screws back into a cartridge, back them out. You'll hear them kind of click into place before you start screwing them back in. That ensures that you are not cutting new threads and are instead threading into the existing threads. Thunked in, and there's that. So that cartridge over, I'm not too bad. And with this one, I'm gonna just use the standard size uh, one-up cleaning card. And with that again, a little bit of fluid on the fluid side. That side's okay. That side's a bit of a tight fit. But not too bad. And then just dry it off with the dry side. And that one's good to go. But now let's take a look at our other two games. And all that we're going to do at this point is now we are removing the Bright Boy that we applied earlier. That's what we're trying to keep out of our system right there. That black gunk. Yeesh. That one was not pretty. And then we're going to grab Goonies and do the same thing with this one. This one's not as bad. 
But it still ain't good, I'll say that much. Yeah, that one didn't pull off as much stuff. Got a little bit there on the cartridge. You want to make sure you clean that off because you don't want excess Bright Boy getting into your system. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take the 1UP card and again, clean up the pins because we don't want any of that residual Bright Boy getting in and gumming up our pins. And we'll hit this guy here again. Now, when I do the last kind of removal here of Bright Boy, you notice I'm kind of twisting the card a little bit just to make sure I'm getting everything towards the edge of the pins too. Um, just to make sure I'm getting everything off of there because like I say, I really don't want Bright Boy getting in and gumming up the works on my system. All right, there we go. Two clean Famicom cartridges. Let's wrap things up. All right, so let's take a look and see how we did this month. So marksman shooting and trap shooting, this is $11 CIB. Uh, and all these prices, I'm using the Game Eye app. If you're not familiar with it, I will have a link right up there where you can check out our live stream from when we were at the Midwest Gaming Classic talking about how to go ahead and keep track of your collection. And then for Tomb Raider, The Last Revelation, this is worth $12 in its condition. Uh, the Goonies playing behind me, uh, that is a $14 game. Now, I will say on that, I had to Bright Boy it three times for it to work, but it's now working beautifully. Kaihu Monogatari, this is a $7 game for the Famicom. And then the SpongeBob SquarePants Super Sponge, this is worth $9. Our total lot here this month worth $53. I pay $35.99 a month, plus about 8 bucks shipping and handling, so about $10 my way as far as value. So I got more than what I paid for value-wise on the games, but quite honestly, the only one of these games that interests me is the Goonies. Um, although I will admit I have not played Kaihu Montakari. I'm sure I'm screwing that up, so we'll check and see what this is all about. This may be a hidden gem. I don't know, uh, but at $7, I'm betting probably not. Um, I've already gone ahead before I have finished this video and canceled my service, and that's not anything against the guys at Video Games Monthly. This is something I typically do, and one of the nice things about the service is you can start and stop. There's no obligation to it, so generally speaking, during the summer, I don't subscribe just because I'm going to conventions or other things are going on. So I take a break during the summer and come probably September, October, we'll be back again. Let me know down in the comments which of these games is your favorite, and also, have you ever tried one of these services, and if so, what do you think of it? Now, if you do want to check out some of our previous month's unboxings from Video Games Monthly, I will have that playlist for you here in a little card that you can go ahead, click on it, and see some of the other games we've gotten in the past. Some of them, very, very awesome. Other ones, well, we got a box. <laughs>